right, this is John Kola with GrowingYourGreens.com. Today we have another exciting episode, and yes, still here at the National Heirloom Expo. And uh, what we're gonna do in this episode is we're gonna go in and check out some of the vendors. One of my favorite things to do at the expo, besides all the different educational talks and learn from the speakers uh, that are presenting here, is some of the booths, because I learned about some of the cool new products that I get to try and use in my garden, and I get to share with you guys the results. Like, just a few years ago, I learned about the Aqua Jet sub irrigation high pressure irrigation system that i'm now using today and i'm having one of the best growing seasons ever with it in the desert climate and hopefully maybe there'll even be some uh cool products to share with you guys and maybe even some other cool plants that i'll get to learn from and guess what you guys are going to learn at the same time as me so let's uh, go inside and uh check out some of the cool vendors this year at the heirloom expo so now we're going to go ahead and uh, head into grace pavilion this is the main area with all the different vendors this place is huge. It's probably like over a hundred different vendors inside here. And there's also vendors outside. And this is what it looks like here in Grace Pavilion. Basically there's a one, two, three, four different aisles, all full of vendors, all different kinds of stuff. And I've already walked through this multiple times to kind of select the vendors that I like the most. It's because if I was here sharing every vendor with you, man, this would be like five hours long and I can't do that. I'm gonna try to keep it to like, you know, a minute or two per vendor so you guys get the gist of what they're doing. I'll also share their websites so that you guys can get more information on the products that you know that, that I like a lot here. All right, so now we got a cool booth to check out. Actually, that's actually right here. It's actually called Magnation Water Technologies. And I know many of you guys might not like believe in this kind of stuff because it might be some hocus pocus dominocus. Actually, my grandma used to say that. But uh, what we have here are some, uh, basically there's a magnet in here and then it actually vortexes or swirls the water in some special way to impart special properties in the water. It makes the water magical. And you could be like a pixie if you, no, just kidding. So anyways, what this does actually basically make, it creates living water out of the non-alive water that you're getting out of the ground. So it makes your water more similar to rainwater. Now this is not a filter. It's not taking out any bad particles, but it's basically like energizing the water for lack of a better term. And it makes water wetter. So it's actually more effective. So actually you're going to get minimum increase in growth, 10%, and you're going to save 10 to 30% water actually on watering needs. And they've have plenty of studies actually that they've done with uh, you know farmers and they show the differences in the crop yields and how the crops look. And actually I still know that many of you guys aren't believing this stuff because how could something like this really do something, right? So I'm gonna show you guys this, check it out. What we're gonna do is we're gonna just take some water here, some smart water. Now, are you really smart if you drink this or are you dumb for buying plastic bottled water, right? So I don't know. So we're gonna go ahead and just pour this smart water in a little Dixie cup here. And now we're gonna go ahead and take the uh, food coloring and put seven drops in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then we're gonna go ahead and swirl this around. I want you guys to see that color in there. Make sure we got this all fully mixed up. All right, then we're gonna take this and actually just uh, pour it through the magnation water uh, device and this is a uh, flow specific so you want to make sure the flow is going the right way so we're just gonna go ahead and put this on top and now we're this is not even under pressure we're just pouring this water through the device just right through the middle here so you guys could see that just about half of it maybe a little bit more so now we're about even now I want to show you guys this we got the magnation water on this side and the other one so I want you guys to do a close-up on that. If you look at the one as a close-up, you know, this guy is basically a little bit darker than the one that went through the water um, mag magnation uh, device. And if we spin this, I want you guys to look at the sides. Look at the sides. See how the water is kind of sticking to the sides and then slowly kind of goes down. Also, this water is uh, actually a, a bit heavier. This one is actually a little bit lighter, and yes, there's a little less water in there, but this, this one's like, it, it, you don't see when I swirl it around, like it's not sticking to the sides very much, it goes right down. I mean, this literally is making the water wetter, so it's gonna be more efficient, you know, any way that you use it, whether it's your crops, or whether that's you drinking, whether that's you bathing, because it's really changing the structure of the water, and I think this is definitely a good thing. So I've been looking into this uh, water technology on making water wetter and energizing it and all this kind of stuff for many years now, and this company has been around for the last eight years. They have a proven research and documentation from farmers and universities that this stuff really works. So I think it might be time for me to you know, try it and find out. And if you wanna learn more about this product, you can actually find them out, find more about it at moreplant.com. 
www.ericsmith.com and uh, hopefully soon enough I'll be trying one even on my show and installing it and share with you guys my results. So the next booth I'm going to share with you guys is actually a booth that you're going to want to pay attention to if you live in an apartment or condo and especially if you don't have green thumbs because you don't need any green thumbs to grow mushrooms. They're not green. <laughs> All right. So what we got here is actually a Mushroom Adventures. They're at mushroomadventures.com and they sell all kinds of different mushroom kits that are super easy and to use you know all it takes is you just buy the box that comes uh, ready for you to water and all you need to do is add water and you'll have mushrooms in a short period of time you'll get harvest and harvest of mushrooms with just one simple box and they got show specials here that aren't gonna be as good as online but here's some uh, heirloom portobello mushrooms growing Here's the uh, portobello white button, an heirloom portobello mixture, small box. Here's my favorite, the mini shiitake box. And they got the standard white buttons. And these are just super simple. I mean, these are all ready to go. You just literally uh, add water and you're gonna be growing your own mushrooms, even if you don't have green thumbs. Now check this out, man. This is really cool. You can just get a standard tote from like Walmart, right? You fill it up with something like sawdust, straw, or like some kind of like, you know, cotton seed husks that have been pasteurized, sterilized, and they're growing, you know, oyster mushrooms. And this is actually the same technique they use in their commercial facility to grow far, far, mushrooms for the farmer's market here. Super cool. And if you don't want one of those uh, do-it-yourself kind of boxes, right, you can get a far better deal by buying the, uh, the starts or the plugs, you know, yourself from here. Like, uh, here's a little cup, and here's actually the different spawn you guys could buy. This is a Hiraculum <laughs> mushroom. See, this is how they come in the in the plugs, or the spawn. Basically, these are really cool because what you're gonna do is you're gonna take like an old log that you got outside, drill a bunch of holes in it, and just put these plugs in there, keep a little bit watered, and then you're just gonna have a whole bunch of mushrooms growing out the log. I mean, super simple. Mushrooms know what to do. All you gotta do is implant them, and uh, you know, give them a little bit of water, and you'll be having mushrooms in no time. And let me tell you guys. You know, if you're into growing your own food and you eat mushrooms, no reason why you should be buying your own mushrooms anymore. I mean, when you grow them, they taste better because, you know, once mushrooms go in the fridge for at least three days, the flavor goes down, the flavor goes poof. And I know you guys know, I mean, with tomatoes, right? You've tasted tomatoes from the store and tomatoes out your garden. Tomatoes out your garden taste so much better. And guess what? Mushrooms that you grow yourself with your own hands taste a lot better too. All right, so now we're going to show you guys actually the Sonoma Compost booth. And uh, one of my favorite compost companies, as you guys can see, is the back of a truck lined up with a garden. I've often said, you know, this would be a good idea if you live somewhere where it gets cold. In the daytime, you could actually drive it out, put a greenhouse over it, and then in the nighttime, just drive it into your, uh, you know, garage and turn the lights on, keep it a little bit warmer, and get some lights for the plants, and grow a lot of food in the back of a pickup truck. I do have a video where I actually show, uh, you know, gardening in the back of a truck before. And I want to show you guys uh, some of the new products in Sonoma Compost. I like Sonoma Compost. I have used them successfully in the past. And you know, one of my things that my dad told me is that if it's not broke, don't fix it. And I've had really good luck with the uh, compost here at Sonoma Compost. And uh, the one I like the most is actually the Mallard uh, Plus is what I primarily used. And in addition, they have now the Biodynamic. So, my latest mixture that I like to do is I like to do half Mallard Plus and half Biodynamic that's blended together and then use that in my raised beds along with things like the rock dust and the worm castings. Of course, I've also been using the Sonoma Biochar. Biochar is a very um, good ingredient to have in your soil. I'd probably mix it about 10 to 20 percent like in the soil mix maximum. And I believe also they're now having some uh, vermicompost or worm castings that their Sonoma Compost is now going to be offering. So. I'm gonna have to check that one out and see how good it is. So now I wanna share with you guys one of my favorite booths here at the Heirloom Expo, and that's actually just a mountain feed and farm supply. And it's your basically uh, small scale food production and farm management uh, resource. They're basically gonna provide all the different ways you can use your food once you grow it. And even if you're starting food and growing seeds and all this stuff, they have over 30,000 unique items in their store in Santa Cruz County that you could visit. And, but if you're not in Santa Cruz County or nearby, you can check them out at mountainfeed.com where they will ship you many of these things. And the reason why I like them a lot is because they really work with food preservation. And one of the questions I get a lot is, hey John, you know, I got all this cabbage and kale and all this kind of stuff, what do I do with it? Well, you know, they have all the different products you need to process them. And one of my favorite ways to process my excess veggies in my garden is through fermentation. 
And as you guys can see, they have a whole selection of fermentation products. These are all different ways you can ferment foods. They got the perfect pickler here. They got different lids. They got these special uh, weights to keep your stuff weighted down. They got different jars that you could do. And check it out, they got like things like beets and cucumbers and carrots and more beets and cucumbers. Uh, Brussels sprouts pickle. They got some kind of like uh, kimchi stuff back there. And they also do things like the kombucha starter, water kefir grains to get some of the fermented foods in your life. Some of these fermented foods I think are very beneficial uh, for the probiotic cultures or beneficial microbes in there that you'll get into you once you eat them. And it's also very important to feed the microbes not only in your soul, but in you by eating a, a plant strong diet rich in fruits and vegetables because it's the fruits and vegetables which are the prebiotics for the probiotics and that's how you're able to culture for example the cabbage with by just putting cabbage in the jar uh, with a water salt brine solution and it ferments naturally because there's naturally occurring lactobacillic acid and then basically you're culturing this and providing it a good environment to live removing all the air with something like an air seal so they have the widest selection of products to allow you to do this. So if you want to learn more, you can check them out at mountainfeed.com. So now I want to share with you guys another cool uh, vendor here at the Heirloom Expo. It's actually uh, Lily Films and they produce the film Symphony of the Soil. You guys know how passionate I am about the soil and how important it is and critically important it is to build the soil. I don't really get into a lot of details on you know, all the reasons why or what is soil and all this kind of stuff. I mean, I do have episodes where I talk about this a little bit, but if you want to learn about soil, you definitely want to get this movie, Symphony of the Soil. The filmmaker has gone to great lengths to determine and explain in very simple terms what soil is, you know, why it's important, how other cultures have used it, traveled different continents to uh, come up with this. It's actually a New York Times critics pick here. So I want to recommend this if you're interested in soil. I mean, this is going to be the best 140 minutes you've ever spent learning about soil, what it is, why it's so critically important in this day and age. And you could buy this online at symphonyofthesoil.com. So now what we're looking at is an aquaponics setup and a commercial aquaponics setup at that. This is the booth of the Viridis and actually they grow aquaponically commercially down in I believe the Gilroy area and I met them originally I don't know earlier this year they're doing some great stuff and I want to show you guys how their setup works it's super simple super easy how it works is they got the fish in here and uh, these fish basically create the fish waste the poop and the pee and while they have some regular fish in there the main fish they focus on you know, at their facility to grow is the catfish. I know many people out there use tilapia and other things, but they found the catfish are more resilient. They're more resilient to the temperatures. They're easier to produce and people love to eat catfish. <laughs> um, but they've had really good success with that. And I think this is something that should probably be looked into more uh, for aquaponics is using the catfish like they are because they're such strong believers in it. And uh, what they're growing aquaponically as a sample here is they just got the standard you know, uh, rafts here, and they got just the water underneath, and check out all the rootage. We've got all the rootage going on there. This is uh, bubbling up, looks very clean inside the system. They've definitely dialed in their system to work very well. They got like a soil scientist and all this stuff on board. And look at this beautiful lettuce, man. I mean, I think I want to eat about five of these for, for dinner right now. In addition, besides the lettuce, they got, of course, the bok choy. Here's another really cool one to grow, the red vein sorrel or bloody dock. They also got the, the butter lettuce and some more lettuce here. In addition, they also grow tomatoes and cucumbers with this aquaponic system. Now, I like growing in the soil a little bit more than aquaponics, but I think aquaponics can fill a niche, you know, in any way that pe people could grow their food, the better. So my favorite nursery here at the Heirloom Expo this year, because I always like to pick out one that has really unique and cool and different stuff that I would like to grow. And it's one actually that I haven't known about. It's been around for the last seven years in Alameda, at the old Navy base. That's actually where uh, Chekhov in uh, Star Trek talked about uh, naval vessels. All right, anyway, so it's Plowshares. And this is a nonprofit organization that helps uh, battered women and children, and of course also men too. And uh, all the money goes back to support the community. And this helps employ and reskill people to learn new skills about plant propagation and uh, starting seeds and all this kind of stuff. Now the reason why I like them is they have a lot of cool rare stuff that literally I haven't seen before. And they make this available for you guys, you know, 
down in Alameda. So it's on my list to check them out one of these days and make a specific episode. So if you live in the Bay Area, you want to definitely check them out. Uh, do a Google search for plowshares. Let's go take a look at some of the cool plants they're selling here at the Plowshares Nursery here at the Heirloom Expo. So of course, some of my favorite plants to grow in the entire Bay Area here in California where you don't get a frost is actually the uh, purple tree collards. They're calling it a kind of kale and if they started it by cuttings. These are nice uh, big plants. And if you look, there's two kinds of kale or tree collards they're gonna have here for you. And uh, one is from a tip cutting, which is cool. This is the kind that basically grows straight up. These guys are gonna grow really tall. And this is from a stem cutting. You can see the stem here dried out and then it just shoots up new plants. So they're both good. I kind of like prefer the, uh, the tip cuttings that come straight up. They're gonna grow taller and more erect. These guys are gonna tend to branch out more, make a big large bush versus like a large tree if that's what you're looking for. And I like that these are available for only $4.99 and uh, they got a lot of good healthy ones. There's many people that are offering the tree collards here, but I like these actually the most. Uh, let's move on and show you some other rare stuff they got growing here. This one's really cool, man. I've never really seen this aside from when I went to Peru. I actually ate some of these uh, mountain papayas, which are a smaller papaya and they're more cold tolerant than your standard papayas that you could eat. And actually, I, I remember bringing back seeds and was eating them, eating the mountain papayas on the airplane. And then I pulled out all the seeds out of it and then brought the seeds in. So I got some of my own seeds. But uh, these guys definitely going to be experimental, um, plant them in the Bay Area, probably under some protection because they're probably t totally frost tolerant, but they're more tolerant of the frost than you know the standard papayas. So it's definitely a curiosity, something to play with, and I'm glad that they have these available because I've never seen them before. Oh, next, check this one out, man. This is actually called the, I don't know, Lesteria formosa, or I just call it the chocolate berry. It says an arching, stemming shrub with flowers hung from the branch tips and beautiful wine-hued calyxes. This very handsome, didacious shrub is a tough one, is very tough once established and works wonderfully as a specimen at the back of large borders. Its dark purple berries arrive in late summer, are edible and taste like caramel or chocolate. Reese's but is not invasive, at least in this country. So man, imagine growing your own caramel or chocolate. That's what I'm looking for. I think I'm gonna pick up both these plants today. So another cool crop, which is a perennial crop here in the Bay Area is this guy right here. It's actually known as the Autumn Olive, and I can't pronounce Roman names, but it's known as a variety as Florence Strange. And it's basically uh, called Florence Strange because it was given by a woman named Florence Strange. And this is a special kind of Autumn Olive. Autumn Olives aren't known normally for their sweetness, but this is simply described as makes an abundance of irresistibly sweet fruits in the fall. Normally they have like an astringent flavor, like I'm growing the sweet gummy, which is closely related. And that's, it can be a tad bit sweet when they're super ripe and the birds start eating them. But before that, they're really kind of astringent, like one of those persimmons that's not fully ripe. And it's definitely an acquired taste. Normally people would make jams and jelly out of these. So I'm definitely gonna be buying one of these to see if it's really as sweet as they say. Because you know, I've not, I've always found that sometimes when they explain things, it's not entirely accurate by any means, but we're gonna plant it and uh, find out. One of the cool things about the autumn olive is it says, autumn olives have five times the lycopene of tomatoes. How about them apples? So the reason why I really like plowshares is that they make a lot of you know unique uh, crops that are hard to find and plants that are hard to find available to you guys. So I really can't wait for the day I get to go down there and visit them and make a full on episode to share all the cool crops they're growing and sharing with people here in the Bay Area. But another one may be very useful to people that even don't live in the Bay Area, and that's this one right here. It's actually known as the uh, hardy kiwi, and this hardy kiwi is self-pollinating, unlike most kiwis, they require a male and a female, much like we require a male and a female to make babies. Uh, they can make babies with just by themselves, and these ones are more cold tolerant up to zones 4A to 11. You can now grow your own kiwis that are very rich in nutrients, including something I like a lot, vitamin C. All right, so probably one of the last plants I wanna show you guys here at Plowshares is one of my favorite fruits that I'm growing to eat. This is also a perennial here in the Bay Area climate. And another thing I like is that it keeps its leaves green all year long, so it's an evergreen. It's from Chile, and it's known as the Ugni Berry, or basically uh, Chilean guava. These guys look really small now. And uh, one of the things I learned today is actually you can use the leaves for tea, which is really cool. 
but it actually makes these little small guava berries that are insanely intensely delicious i've only been able to eat some off my plants like once and i did capture this on video and when i eat it you just see my face like it's just insane just my face just lights up like it's, it's so intense it tastes like starburst like candies it's so delicious you know put some rock dust in the soil uh, have some good healthy soil good soil microbiology and you're gonna produce some of the best tasting little small berry guava fruits you've ever tasted. So my time here at the Plowshares Nursery Display and all the amazing plants is at an end. I'm gonna definitely get down to Alameda one of these days to check them out. If you wanna learn more about them when they're open, their hours and all this other stuff, you wanna check them out at plowsharesnursery.com. Let's go head off and check out another vendor here at the 2014 Heirloom Expo. All right, so now I'm gonna share with you guys the last two booths. The sun's going down the last day of the event and I wanna get out of here and I got a lot of stuff to do. But uh, one of the other booths that I want to share with you guys actually is the uh, C Agri Inc. They, they're makers of the C90 and also the Seasons 90, which is a natural sea salt that you could use for agriculture and also for eating, also for your animals. It's definitely really good stuff. Uh, be sure to stay tuned and subscribe if you're not already one of my subscribers for a dedicated episode about this very topic because I feel it's so important. I want to dedicate a whole entire episode to trace minerals and how important it is for not only plant health or animal health, but also human health and also planetary health. So we're going to go ahead and uh, skip this one for now. But yeah, you can check them out at caagri.com to learn more. All right, so the last booth I'm going to share with you guys today is the Boogie Brew booth. And uh, as you guys know, I really love the Boogie Brew products. You know, I use their compost tea and they offer many of the different products that I recommend they make available for you guys because many of the products are very hard to find, unfortunately, because most nurseries will not sell some of these specialized products that I like to use in my very garden. And uh, at the uh, Heirloom Expo, they got some Boogie Brew prices. We're not gonna show you guys that because you guys are gonna be jealous of the prices there. These are like wholesale prices. So if you come next year, to the expo here you're going to want to hit this up first and clean them out because you're not going to get any lower prices unless you're a dealer actually so uh super good prices but uh one of the things i want to talk about here today is not only their boogie brew compost tea world-class veganic compost tea that josh himself drank in front of me before not all compost teas are created equal you could definitely check an episode that i did with josh talking about the differences in compost teas and also be sure to stay tuned and subscribe to my YouTube channel for an upcoming video where basically we're doing an uh, open source compost tea. So Josh is going to share his secret recipe on his compost tea and I'm going to go inside his factory where he makes it and uh, show all the different ingredients and Josh is going to tell you guys how you can make your own compost teas if you want, if you don't want to buy his. For me, of course, you know, I don't want to spend extra time and reinvent the wheel. And if somebody already did something that's really good and has proven results, that's simply what I'm going to use, right? So one of the coolest new things here at the Boogie Brew booth is their all new Boogie Frass. This is the insect frass that I like so much. They screen this down to really uh, good particle size. And this is the stuff that I'm now using in my garden. Frass is basically insect poop <laughs> and uh, it adds a lot of nutrients to your garden but more than importantly than the nutrients it also adds the biologics you know the beneficial microbes that will infuse your garden so I like that they're now offering this and making this available so because you guys were not here to get some of these wholesale special deals at the heirloom expo I've negotiated Josh and literally had to twist his arm to get a good deal for you guys on his award-winning compost tea that I like to use in my garden as well as the frass and some of the other things that I like that he offers for you guys out there YouTube land delivered prices for uh, six pounds of the boogie brew compost tea that'll make a hundred and five gallons of nutrient dense compost tea that you now can still dilute down further to feed your plants with this will feed your plants for a nice long time next we got two pounds of the boogie frass we got four pounds of the c90 minerals you guys just saw the episode on this previously as well as two pounds of the worm gold plus worm casting these are the only worm castings i recommend because you will increase the growth of these and it's totally proven now this whole package here is going to be on only for a limited time for the next 10 days for $59.99. And oh yes, it gets even better. <laughs> All right. So if you're one of those guys that actually does trimming and trims his herbs, if you know what I mean, Josh is also going to include a trim tray. It's good for separating out the pollen. For those of you guys that need to separate out your pollen when you're trimming, 
for an additional twenty dollars so 79.99 uh, for this whole kit so not only can you trim but now you got all the nutrients you need for the next season to get you guys up and growing so yeah, definitely a good price. And yeah, check that out. If you want to get this deal, you want to check out boogiebrew.net slash GYG for these special low prices on this kit, which are only good for the next 10 days. After that, the price goes up another 10 bucks. So get in now, order early. And of course, there's other Growing Your Green specials on that special GYG page of all of Josh's products if you're not interested in this particular package. I mean, the sun's going down, they're finishing up the music, I gotta get out of here. I really hope you guys enjoyed this episode, learning about some of my favorite vendors here at the 2014 Heirloom Expo. Once again, my name is John Kohler with GrowingYourGreens.com, and until next time, keep on growing.